This is the Open University. Hi there, you find me on a beautiful September day in Berlin on the Friedelstrasse in Neukölln, uh, thinking, why is everybody walking backwards? And if they can do it, why can't I? So today's uh, Open University video, which is the 200th in the series, is uh, about me going backwards and looking at the things I've been talking about in this uh, sequence of uh, videos, vlogs, ruminations, which began on December the 5th, 2016. Welcome to the Open University. I seem to be living increasingly in the past. You can see behind me here some of the, um, the retro paperback books I've been buying, and they're mostly, I mean, they're uniquely from the 20th century, um, and they represent my idea of uh, the glamour of uh, European culture. And sweaters are more for me than mere warm garments. They're um, kind of uh, portable semiotics. Aha. 2016 was a, an awful year because we lost Bowie, we got Trump, we got Brexit. And uh, I kind of felt moved to put my perspective as a kind, kind of embattled cosmopolitan living between Europe and Japan at the time. I had an apartment in Osaka. And um, I was kind of bored cycling around, or I mean, fascinated buying secondhand books and, and clothes and things in Osaka and the the, the CD arcades, the shorten guy of the rundown poor areas. And I wanted to share that. So some of the earliest videos are me showing my book and sweater finds. Today there is actually no course unit and there's no topic. I just thought it might be interesting to do a piece about uh, nothing. I don't know what the point is really in doing these. You probably thought, uh, if you watched yesterday's one about nothing, it was already touching quite a depressing theme, but uh, at least I was chipper, you know, at least I, I looked happy and uh, just glad to be alive. Today, I just feel desolate. Resonance, it's what uh, musical instruments do, they resonate. And it's also what artists do in culture, they resonate through the culture, sometimes. Sometimes they don't, sometimes their, their notes fall with a dead sound, like uh, like tears in rain. Like bricks falling onto rubber. Adorno had, um, had influenced me mostly with his book um, Minima Moralia, which is very um, paradoxical philosophical ruminations um, written during the Second World War. I never really broke through to uh, the big meme kind of uh, viewership. Uh, I don't think I was intending to. I was intending to put a kind of minority and marginal point of view. But um, the biggest uh, rated uh, videos I made in the whole career of this uh, series, one about Scott Walker reached 7,274 views. Uh, one about being schizoid, the schizoid phenomena, was five and five and a half thousand. One about microfascism got about 4.6k, and one about moving to Athens for eight months got 3,000 uh, views. Yeah, I'm here with Colin Marshall, who, um, to my mind, is one of the most interesting observers of Asia, and in fact, a public intellectual. Japan being something like Switzerland or like Sweden in Asia, whereas Korea is more like um, Turkey. Sakoku is the term for Japan's closure from the West, uh, from the rest of the world, in fact. So I'm going to look back over the decades and talk about uh, percussion. In some instances, it would be tasteless to, to connect somebody's um, decision to take their own life to current political events. But in Mark's case, I don't think it is, because he very explicitly made that connection himself. Un discours sur l'altérité. I, the under mentioned by this document, do declare my true intentions, my last will, my testament. When I turn up my toes, when I rattle my clock, when I agonize, I want no great white weepings, no tearing of hair, no wringing of hands, no sighs, no lack of days, no woe is me, and none of your sad adieus. Go, go, go and get the priest and then go. Boys, death, where is thy 
victory grave. Where is thy sting? When I snuff it, bury me quickly then. Let carousals begin, but not to do with a few ham sandwiches, a sausage roll or two, and a small port wine, please. Roll the carpet right back, get cracking with your own gay Gordon. Send your knees up, check it up, live it up, sup it up, hell of a kind of a time. And if the coppers come around, well, tell them the party's mine, boys. You're Rosebuds are numbered, gather them now in Rosebud's name. And if your hands are too encumbered, gather a bud or two for Wayne. This is my cube where I sit in gloom. Uh, Lightwise it's gloom, but it's not uh, emotionally gloom. It's actually a place of great security, a womb really, rather than a gloom. Um, I sit here and I incubate ideas. It's my... Uh, incubating space. My name is uh, Mr. Pink and I speak truth to power. Zeitgeist. It's one word, it sounds like two words, it's made up of uh, the German words Zeit, which means time, Geist, which means spirit, so it's the spirit of the times. Hello class, I am cool. I am the coolest person, one of the coolest people in the world. Against intensity. Open University. One of the key parts of my strategy as Momus, as a songwriter, has been to be against intensity. And uh, I'll explain what I mean by that. Uh, it's, it's essentially an anti-romantic strategy. It comes probably a little bit from my personality, which is a quiet, introverted, and yet slightly puckish. It was a confident time for the West because they had won a war against an opponent. There was another opponent, of course, the, the Russians in the Cold War, who had a different aesthetic because Stalin was in power at that time. And you had um, Stalinist kitsch and socialist realism as the, the prevailing aesthetics in that bloc. And so the West, almost by default, had to, to go into abstraction, formalism, minimalism, and various kinds of what the Russians, what the Soviets called decadent formalism. Today I have something to do, which is um, get my bicycle fixed, because the uh, back tire is flat. So I'm off to Ajiten Chayasan, a bicycle man. Uh, this is me leaving my building, taking the yellow lift down from the eighth floor. And um, luckily it's a nice warm day, it's actually a really uh, welcoming day. And um, I should also buy some bread when I'm out there. This is the lobby of my building. And uh, here's the bike. I'm going to have to walk it. It's actually a real, um, a real hassle having to walk even to the local shops. It seems like a long way when you're used to just doing it in a few seconds on the bike. Uh, this is my sweater and uh, yeah very nice spring-like day my god what's that I see this fire in the distance oh, it's the Shinto shrine the local Shinto shrine they seem to be having some kind of festival let's check it out what happened in the 60s was simply a democratization of uh, an emphasis in the 50s on creativity which actually comes out of socio-political uh, realities of the 50s, notably the so-called Sputnik shock, in which the Americans noticed that the Russians had overtaken them technically and were able to launch a satellite into a geostationary orbit above the Earth. Your old lecturer used to be a folk singer, and he used to put one leg up on stools like this in uh, venues around Great Britain in the mid-1980s and sing sinister songs. I have an apology to make. There are some things I haven't been telling you. Works between that phrase, which you really only encounter in the art world. You don't really read about bankers who work between Frankfurt and London, or but uh, you know they must exist. They are part of this global uh, um, porous uh, world, which uh, everybody now is turning against. Or I say everybody, a strong minority in several countries has turned against, and this kind of global citizen, rootless cosmopolitan idea of the artist, which is still very 
not just represented in biennales, but actually the point of many biennales, I would say. I think that curators actually are trying to ram this home at a time when they realize that their model of the world is endangered. We live in a culture which hates the body and loves language. A logocentric culture. It's partly Christianity, it's Plato, it's all the poisons at the base of our culture which make us think this way. But as a result, the only time we use gesture is when we can't actually hear what you're saying. We're stuck in a traffic jam, we can't be heard in the next car going to tell them something and we make a gesture, probably one involving a finger and an orifice. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Zwischen Null und Unendlich by Karl Krollo, between zero and infinity. What I do in the evenings is that I, I turn on my projector and I watch um, documentaries about usually dead authors and uh, I get particularly excited if there's um, some kind of pan across their bookshelves even if it's a little blurry and I can't really see what kind of books they have because um, I'm as you know a collector of 20th century paperbacks a devotee of old and molding paper the smell of it the touch of it the design the layout the um, the sense of a vanished culture in which people were indulged Ta. Ta, me, say, ending with an e acute is the adjective to be tatamized and in a wider sense to be imbued with Japanese culture, to live on the floor, to, to go native, to, um, to adopt the customs of uh, Japan. If anybody else likes it, it's a bonus. I just do it to please myself. This actually influenced um, Gilles Deleuze, the French philosopher, who then he wrote Anti-Oedipus with uh, Guattari, Felix Guattari, and they have a whole section where they're talking about um, vitalism uh, and how, how Samuel Butler's prediction of these intelligent machines and their danger, which is very real to us today, we really see this, that we just read an article about how the, the whole the current Trump administration is based on a this uh, billionaire who's uh, into algorithms and uh, influencing people politically by finding out market research information from these social media networks and things. Um, that's the beginning of a kind of very sinister coup based on machine intelligence. So I entered my flat in Stirling University to find a couple fucking in the communal sitting room. Just go ahead, I'm very easy going about it because it's an experimental radical university and they do that. And when they're cleaning up the sink, I tell them, my name is Nick. But I don't know which is my room. And the girl is ugly and the boy is shy. There are still these very, and increasingly, you could say, localized cultures. I'm not. I'm a citizen of nowhere, an artist of nowhere. I'm making references. My breakfast, Brexit, breakfast, Brexit references on Scobolaches. The first thing I reached for was Hergé in Brussels. Brussels, you know, of course it would be. Brexit is exit from Brussels, isn't it? So... Um, I, Scobber Lotch's uh, first track is, uh, first Brexit track is um, Bashi Bazooks, which is Captain Haddock. You know, what people are showing mostly on Dazeen is um, private spaces which are à l'abri de, as you would say in France. Um, they're sort of uh, sheltered from the public space, which is increasingly problematical uh, and increasingly irrational. The less I allow myself to talk about, the more I may end up talking about. How could I not have spoken about sex in this series of Open University lectures? It is the topic. The whole raison d'etre of the, of the Labour Party up until the 1990s was to, to win the fruits of his labour for the worker, uh, which seems perfectly reasonable, you know, to, to get the worker who is... Um, simply paid a basic living wage usually um, to, to give him profit share, you know, essentially. That was um, crossed out because it was seen as too socialist for the British Labour Party. A very sad moment. The closest I got to meeting Bowie was meeting Iggy Pop in Paris. I was uh, up in the Place de Tertre in 1996. I lived there, my apartment was right there. I'd been downtown and bought a printer and I was coming back with the printer under my arm and suddenly I saw three of the sketch artists who, who work in the square walking backwards and sketching somebody while walking backwards. And I thought, that's really unusual. Who are they sketching? And I saw that it was this diminutive figure who was Iggy Pop. 
So I just went up to him. Normally I would be too shy, but it was just such a surprise. And also because we were two Anglophones in Paris, I thought maybe he'd be keen to speak English. <laughs> I went up and said, hey, Iggy, what are you doing here? And he said, uh, I come here. I have friends here. One of the first things Ivo did when he met us, okay, we met him, we saw him, we came into the beggar's banquet shop and our eyes met. And uh, I think I was, I was a very skinny, shy guy. And he was also almost autistically shy himself, a very thin-skinned guy who you would say probably is not cut out for the world of business. And this book really goes into Ivo's kind of personality, his rather oblique personality, which of course was terribly important for the oblique music that he was going to put out on this label, um, but also led him to you know, personal problems with most of the groups that he worked with, um, inevitable icings over of those relationships. So today has been a good day. The sun is shining slightly. I got not just one sweater, but two. And um, nobody seems to collect the uh, Farrell Bentley Burnett um, period of, or the Germano Facetti period of the late 60s, early 70s. There's stuff that I'm interested in collecting. Anyway, I wasn't looking for books today. I was actually videoing as I went on the train and as I went uh, walking through my favorite mall, which is the, I think it's called the Chuo Mall in Amagasaki. And then along comes modernity, which is a supposedly a rational system, which uh, completely changes the organization according to scientific principles, productive principles, the division of labor, and a, a very regimented kind of way of uh, organizing your own life. So if you're using a calendar or you're using sort of spreadsheet software on your computer, your computer is sort of organizing your life in this modern, in the widest possible sense, way. There's obviously something about me and my concerns which doesn't really touch many people. Um, but that doesn't stop me doing it. And it certainly wouldn't have stopped me making music either. On my music videos, I occasionally get a freak uh, a success like The Beast uh, song also from 2016 actually which has racked up 164,000 views uh, for me that's amazing usually my uh, songs also only get a couple of thousand views so but it's not about the views it's really about a way for me to assert my values and my vision of life um, which is probably why I make records as well so without further ado as they say on these vlogs um, here are some clips from the last, uh, what is it, uh, seven years of uh, Open University videos. Open University. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. 